One of the most advertised features on Asus motherboard, especially the high-end ones, is the AI overclocking feature that comes included, in this case with my ROG Maximus 11 Hero motherboard. Now, does it work as advertised and is it a good thing to rely on it to actually have a stable overclock for the long term? Let's find out. I will um, save my current settings, which are manual overclock, and I will run the AI overclocking, show you guys how it's done and what the results are. Now, uh, first of all, quick recap of AI overclocking. This feature can be accessed through the um, AI Suite 3, which I have shown you guys on the video where I did the rundown of all the motherboard features and the firmware that comes included. Uh, it is right here on the top, AI overclocking, as well as five-way optimization that uh, uh, optimizes other things like uh, fan curves, uh, power settings, and all that sort of thing. Uh, in any case, the AI overclocking is what we're looking for. It is here, and uh, you could simply press this button, and uh, I will actually show you guys. But first of all, I'm gonna back up my BIOS settings so I can put them back when this is all said and done. Once you're in the BIOS, make your way to the Tools menu. Uh, you should see some uh, backup. Uh, to USB safe profile, something like that. I forgot the exact name. Uh, in any case, uh, select the number of profile that you want to save, in this case the slot 2, insert a name for it and so you can identify it and uh, go ahead and uh, press enter, uh, or well, press save to profile, I mean, and uh, that will prompt you to if you wanted to save the profile and it is saved. If you want some extra backup, you can also back it up to a USB drive in case uh, your BIOS gets wiped for some reason, but it's not exactly necessary, but it's more of a safeguard in this case. Your, bi your profile should only be cleared if you, for example, reset or update your BIOS. Head back into Windows to the AI overclock area. Spoiler alert, I know how this is going to end, and I have made a slight mistake, So, but I'll let you guys see why and what exactly happened. Here you have some predictions of what the overclock will look like when it is completed, what the system thinks that your current CPU, motherboard and cooling system can handle. As you can see it is expecting quite a lot, it wants to go to 5.4 GHz on an AIO cooler which is quite a bit, but we are going to let it try and see how it works. The PC will restart and uh, it will come back up and as you saw there on the screen it will give you already a preview on the start on the boot up menu of what kind of overclock it is achieving or attempting to achieve. And uh, as you can see, the 50% overclock up to 5.4 GHz did not really uh, turn out well enough. Uh, it crashed immediately on loading, and on the second load attempt that you are seeing now, it just completely froze. So I uh, cut it short by there and went back to the BIOS, and as you can see, the reason is that uh, it is AI optimized, as you can see there at the core ratio, and uh, it is trying to go to the 54, which is the 5.4 GHz overclock that is attempting on all cores. And it is crashing because, as you can see, the voltage is still set to the voltage that I had set for my manual overclock. It did not adjust to the voltage necessary for the 5.4. So what you need to do every time you attempt an AI overclock is go to exit, load optimize defaults, and this will set the motherboard to basically the base settings. And then the AI overclock will be able to adjust those settings itself, as opposed to leaving them as they are, which was the case. After doing that and doing the AI overclock again, it did boot up, as you can see, AI overclock at 5.4, 50% overclock it claims, and um, it did boot up, it, so it did the AI overclock. But uh, let us see how stable it actually is, and uh, how it is temperature-wise. It gives you a little screen with overclocking report, what it's achieved. Uh, let's start this W monitor to see what the stats are. I apologize for the image quality uh, because of the fact that I am recording this from the uh, recording the BIOS and all. I had to point my webcam at the PC and mount it on my laptop. So I was not really seeing how the image was turning out as I was recording, uh, so the quality is not great. So I cannot really show you the temperatures, I apologize for that very much, but the idle temperatures were fine, they were completely fine, and uh, as you can see on the report, uh, it is at the 5.4 mark, uh, the voltage uh, is a bit on the high side though. 
is not so high that it will fry your computer, but uh, it was setting it the V core to 1.44, if memory serves. Uh, well, it is not. It is still within the recommended limit for an overclock uh, on a CPU of this kind, uh, i7 9700K. It is approaching the point where okay, this is a bit too much and it will degrade the CPU. It's not crazy that it's that high because 5.4 gigahertz overclock on all cores is quite a high overclock, especially in a cooling system like I have. Uh, but still, it's more than I would recommend. Let's test it on uh, Prime95 though, and see if it actually holds up that voltage at the, that uh, frequency. Uh, spoiler alert, it's not going to show much. I usually do the small FTT because it's the most intensive uh, test on Prime95. It uses AVX workload, and as you can see the temperature, as you might be able to see, I apologize, uh, the temperature immediately shot up to the 80-ish degrees. That is still safe. Um, with my stable overclock, it shoots up to 85, 86-ish when it's you know running for a while. So it's not horrible. But the thing is, uh, as you might have noticed, it shot up to that much and it immediately came down. And uh, why is that? Because the overclock is not stable. Uh, as you can see, when I go back to the Prime95 test window, uh, it immediately, within a few seconds, encountered errors. So the overclock is far, far, far from stable. Um, it is a way too high overclock at uh, too low voltage to be stable. And the voltage is not low by any means. Uh, 1.44 is kind of pushing the limits of reasonable voltage for, uh, you know, uh, amateur, amateur slash intermediate enthusiast. Uh, but it's too low to hold that frequency stable. So as you can see, uh, yeah, AI overclocking didn't really do a good job of making the computer be stable at the frequency that it predicted and at the voltage that it predicted. Now you could go here and adjust some settings, make it, um, you know, try to stabilize it yourself, but kind of defeats the purpose of AI overclocking. If the purpose of AI overclocking is that it does it all for you and you don't have to worry about it, and if you're not very knowledgeable uh, about overclocking in general, the program will do it for you and you can enjoy it without having to, you know, put in a lot of uh, the work and research yourself, then it is not very effective, is it? Because if you have to go and fix it uh, after it uh, op supposedly optimizes your system, then what's the point? Uh, it doesn't really do a whole lot of, um, you know, benefit for beginning users that want to try their hand at overclocking and just want something to uh, get them started and do the most important settings for them because the voltage is high, the frequency is too high, and it's not stable. So it's not really a great starting point. It will probably leave you with a mostly unusable PC that will be crashing all the time. Now you can go and fix the settings yourself. You can adjust the fan curves and all, but I it also gives you weird fan curves if you run the five-way optimization. So yeah, my verdict, I do not recommend using this. It might be a, ca a problem that my desk build is not a standard case, so it overestimates the cooling and does not predict things properly. But uh, in any case, uh, it is not something I can recommend, especially not to beginner users that might actually leave the PC running at such high, high voltages and high frequencies, and then might not have any idea how to fix it. So to set back your old settings, go again to the tool menu and to the place where you load and save your profiles, select the profile and to load and press load. Once that is done, you can simply go to exit, uh, save changes and reset, and as you can see, all the settings that you were previously using will be there. Uh, you can double check them if you want, but it's a saved profile, so it will be exactly the same. As you can see the core voltage is set to what I had previously. Uh, all the fan curves, as you can see, they are uh, pretty much all safe there. So it is a pretty safe way to fiddle with the settings a little bit and be sure that you have your old settings safe to fall back to uh, when you actually want to return to them if the ones you are trying do not work out. Uh, as you can see, core ratio back to 51. Uh, AI overclock is back from uh, you know what it was. So just press. OK, and uh, put your PC. 
So yeah, as you can see, AI overclocking does not really deliver on the promise of uh, easy to achieve stable overclocking that we kind of would come to expect from such a program. Uh, these are delicate things that the program is uh, messing with, voltages and frequencies and uh, who knows what else it's doing in the background. And uh, you kind of expect something like that from a company for, like Asus to be a bit more refined and to actually do a better job. Now their claim is that uh, the system will learn over time and improve itself and uh, if it's too high it will you know reduce itself over time and overclock a bit lower or if it's too low and the system can overclock more it will actually increase the overclock over time and uh, you know optimize itself as you use it although if it starts this high at 5.4 and it's crashing and it's unusable you cannot keep using it like that so it won't have a chance to lower itself on the other hand it might actually damage your cpu by attempting to go too high uh, so yeah is it something i recommend to beginners i would like to i would really really like to say yes because the idea of ai overclocking that actually works is very appealing but i don't think we're there yet and i don't think it's something I could tell people, hey, you guys should use that. So uh, that is my take on it. Uh, this has been Ethic PC Guy, and I hope it has been useful for you guys, and I will see you next video.